Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee to order uh, for our July session. Uh, thank you for all being here and giving me this honor to kind of kick this off, I gotta tell you, It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we'll start with roll call. I think, oh, good, Aaron joined us. Anywhere you'd like, sir, thank you. I don't bite. Lee. Okay. Present. Sabula. Lyra. Scott. Present. Roberts. Present. Hess. Present. Geyer. Present. Yang. Present. Perfect. Thank you, Heather. And moving right along, I have a motion to approve the minutes. The land acknowledgement. Oh, sorry, land acknowledgement. Hey, very important. Oh, I skipped that one. Um, all right. Of all people. Of all people, don't you know it? Just to help ground us in uh, space, place, and time, just like to read a land acknowledgement. Uh, we are gathered here on the lands that were originally home to the Menominee and Ho Chunk nations. Uh, we honor the Menominee and Ho Chunk communities and are grateful for their stewardship of land and waters. We acknowledge these ancestral grounds as sacred and remember the complex history of settler colonialism on these lands and the effects that persist today. We commit to a restorative and healing relationship of the original inhabitants and our community. And then I will move into uh, asking if there is a motion to approve our minutes from the June 28th meeting. I move we approve the minutes from the June 28th meeting. I second. Any discussion? We're good. Okay. Take no discussion then. Thank you for that. What's that? Okay. Um, do we, yes, uh, vote on the minutes then. We'll move to a vote to approve them as written. Okay. So uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Hearing none, I think that work. Thank you very much. All righty, so then, are there any individuals here? I didn't get any notice that we had anyone coming to speak. Um, nope, I didn't receive any requests for anyone to give any uh, citizen statements. Statements today, okay. Um, could we just kind of just spend a moment to ask if, uh, how, since I think this is an important part of it, and I know we are it's somewhat new now that we're meeting in person again. I just want to understand or make certain that we have a real clear pathway to ensure that individuals know how to make this uh, request. And I ask only because if I go to the website myself, I am pretty savvy in that, but some they're not always the most obvious and easy to access. So I'm just wondering if it's something we can consider or would like to consider you know, it, it, if you know, maybe in a future point in time, or if there are some other ideas, um, and ensuring that how is this information getting out there? I know we can individually do our part, but you know, I'm gonna understand. I'm gonna make so sure. It's absolutely, clear. and I'd love to just comment, and for anybody who is watching, that on our agenda every month there is an email address to send if you'd like to uh, make any statements or sign up for comments on agenda items. Um, also, if people arrive here at the meeting, we can also add them for statements as comments and comments as well. And certainly, if any one of you has uh, has an inquiry from anyone, um, you know, of course, again, they can email, um, which again is on your agenda, or they can show up here, or you guys can reach out to me as well to assist them. But I think the bigger question or the comment might be people still are unaware that we exist. They're not necessarily aware of our agenda. It's something where they have to pull it out instead of us pushing it to them. So do, do we want to start pushing? Where I mean, we have social media, we can do a graphic that has the agenda, that has the email, we can post it you know, a couple of weeks in advance, you know, the reach of places like, so you know, you're from Oshpa, Oshkosh, support Oshkosh, those are, they, those have huge reaches. So do we want to do things like that and make it more bold? 
or are we okay with just letting people find us, which is really the traditional way of doing government, is government doesn't usually go out and say, hey, what do you think about this? You sort of hear it through the grapevine, and from my perspective, that creates a negativity because people just say, I didn't know, which happened when you were at that meeting. No, I don't think you were for the day-by-day warming shelter three weeks ago. No, so no, I was So I attended as a, as a resident of River East, not so much as a DEI committee, though that is you know profoundly what we do is addressing the inequity of, of the homeless, the inequality. The, it, it got kind of brutal, and, and the big issue was I was never told. I, I never heard about it. How dare you put this up for a vote for rezoning? I think there may be blood tomorrow when it's voted on by the city. There's a really angry people. It's not true they didn't hear because I know they got a written letter. They got another written letter. I do it on Facebook. It's not necessarily, if you don't read it, but I we can back it up, at least from our neighborhood. I'm sorry, it went to every address. So, so that's, don't, when, when people say, I didn't know about it, you didn't seek it. So do we be take the first step and and put it out there no they're still going to say i didn't see it well there's always going to be that but no i just i just wanted to bring it up to perhaps just yeah. have a bit of a discussion around it and wonder if we can get maybe a okay to maybe just a brief list at some point of how this message might be going on. i know you told us but i like i'd be curious as to how the city puts out other pieces of information you know, in, in other ones, events, you know, other, just other avenues that, that, that there may right. exist, you know, just within city functions in general. Um, Don't say the back of the water bill. No one reads that. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just being really curious, like how does the city yeah. advertise in all broad spectrums? Because if we're charged with reaching out to all mm-hmm. areas and sectors of the community, I would just like to understand perhaps what's already in existence before we can even recommend anything different is what I'm thinking is maybe we can talk about that at a future point, but um, okay. Thank you. I guess that's absent any input from the citizen comment section. Um, that's a good point. All right. Well, if anybody else has anything to say. Moment. Thank you. Um, Public comment, there seems not to have been any. Did anybody receive any inquiries or feedback individually? Any? Okay. Public comment, okay. I know I did not either, so. <coughs> on. Uh, we can go to really item number six on the agenda, I believe. It would be uh, around our discussion uh, for both planning development of our report to the city and the use of the facilitator. I think we had received word that, you know, our original hope to use FEI didn't really work out. Uh, We received a list of other potential candidates. Uh, I know Michelle had put out a request again, a reminder to us all to submit any names. Um, I don't know if you received any additional names, but whether we did or didn't, I guess, if I understand things correctly, we're gonna start working on the RFQ. Is that correct? Yes. I was able to meet with our purchasing manager and we'll do a, we'll call it a a pretty informal RFP or RFQ where um, I have some names that we can reach out to all of them, tell them a little bit about what you're looking to have done. Ashley and I did take a little time to discuss that as well in this last couple of weeks. Um, so that we can reach out to the names you have given me and we have gathered through the city. If there's any other recommendations, please give them to me. And we would like to get that out as soon as possible so that we can get a response and see if there's anyone who thinks they could help us out in our plan development. So we can have a facilitator to help you guys. How many names do you have so far? I have five. I think that's a good And how many of those were under consideration before any of them um one was originally one of our considerations uh when we did our uh, rfp for for fei Mm -hmm. which is helping us with our uh, internal um development and do we know if that person is interested and or available we 
We don't know because we haven't reached out yet. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, is there any other discussion or thought around potential candidates? Are there any other questions around there? So I, I think then you're talking about we'd like to get that out as soon as possible. Is there anything that we need to do as a committee at this point to help facilitate that? Or you know, do you have a timeline that you're thinking you'll be able to at least get that? Right. I don't, I don't think I need anything further. I would say um, it's just a matter of finalizing it and getting it out to people. I would say within the next couple of weeks, definitely before our next meeting, we should be able to get that out. Um, we normally give people a few weeks to respond. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Is that something where we as a committee want to look at the verbiage that goes out, or is it just sort of boilerplate? Because what we need is going to be different than what somebody else might need. So do we look at that and um, come up with ideas and tweaks, or is it just go out? <coughs> I, yeah, Ashley and I did discuss a little bit what I what mm -hmm. we felt we were looking for, which is someone who can come in, um, facilitate with you during some meetings, gather all your thoughts, organize them outside of the meeting, and then be able to come back with a proposal of what they think um, you want part of your plan. We figured it would take a few sessions to get that all ironed out. But I think the important thing would be be able to meet with you guys during the meetings and then do some work outside of the meetings in order to have uh, to develop that plan for you. I guess my question was that proposal, that request for proposals that goes out, does that have verbiage that we as a committee need to look at? So. So it's targeted toward the right person, or does anybody who does facilitating in any genre does that work? That's the question. Well, I would leave that up to others' uh, opinions as well. But I'd offer mine, and to some extent, Carmen, I think, and I feel that it's it's almost we're going to be the ones to dictate and direct the content and the comments and that. So I don't know that their background. I mean, it would be nice if they understood where we're coming from and all that, but I don't know that it necessarily is so narrow. Well, I don't know either. I've never well, I'm just, it, I'm just so. putting it out there. Like to me, it seems as if really we're looking for someone just to help us do the work, facilitate the structure, get our inputs, and kind of facilitate that process, draft it so that when we can come to our sessions here, we'll have something to look at, work through, okay. provide feedback to that individual as a group, and then continue our our working sessions around that. You know, I think was was what Michelle and I were kind of okay, thinking yeah. through as a as a. And I'm certainly want to hear your input. We, we it was just sort of a thinking, like how do we start this discussion? But as far as a process to kind of move this along timely, like we want to maximize our time together mm -hmm. to be able to provide our in, our group feedback, have it prepared and to our in, in time to review it, and get, you know, so that we can really move this along. Um, not that we're behind schedule by any means, but you know, this is important. There are timely things. Um, one thing I, I put out there so everyone's aware, this in my own thinking around this, it seems that this would allow us some more structure to field more t immediate um, requests to, for response, to field some other things from public. You know, we're gonna, we, we already have requests and things we're being asked to do and address, but it just seems that by getting this at least structured with a facilitator, at least we know I don't know. It just I can see there's multiple uses for it. As long oh, as way of saying it, would be it. Incredibly and, beneficial. and I don't and I don't know that we need it targeted okay. specifically DI. But I'm, I'm open to anybody else's opinions on the matter for sure. It's not my choice. My thoughts is that if it was simply going out as a public notice, that we'd be more careful in, in reviewing it and what was going out. But because it's going to targeted people who we know have an interest in exactly what we're doing, I would feel comfortable with it just going out. That's okay. just my opinion. Okay. Um, the fact that again, when it's targeted as already to, to some it. extent, yeah, just as a, just out as a public notice. Thank you, Beth. Is there, anybody else have thoughts on that? Like, do, is this something you want to review before it gets sent out, or, or, or more importantly, do you have and or equally as important, do you have something that you th you want to ensure we are putting on there because we can we could give that to the administration right now and say, yeah. hey, this is what we want to make sure is on there. Aside, beside just the structure and the process that we're trying to get through here. Um, I don't feel a particular need to review the document. 
Um, and I assume, right, these five individuals or the five names we would be meeting with, or how would that? Good question. Before. Right. Well, once we have responses, made, we will right. bring their proposals back to this team. So you'll be able to look at their proposals. Uh, we could potentially, you know, choose some to bring in to meet with you as well, where you can further share your vision and they can further share theirs. So I think there's going to be opportunity for you to say, yes, I think as a team, mm -hmm. this will work well for us, or that's not really the proposal we were looking for. Yeah, I'd be comfortable with that process there, yeah. And, and I do agree with you, since it's such a small number of people and people that come referred and have an interest, yeah. This is um, related, um, you know, at the last meeting I had asked whether we could use some of those funds towards our diversity coordinator position and, um, you know, I'd received some feedback on that. And um, just in addition to that, I think, um, if that is something that we are looking to, um, you know, working on for the next meeting or two or a couple months, um, you know, I think that coordinator could play an integral role in helping, you know, put that plan together and serving as a liaison uh, for our committee or would, that person would sit on the committee. Um, and there would be a little more consistency and a fluidity then um, as far as, you know, our vision, what our committee would like to do and um, having like a point person. So um, I still would like us to think about maybe working towards having that coordinator or having a position um, from the, in the city to um, be involved with part of that adding to that structure and um, developing that those frameworks. Oh, absolutely. I, I don't disagree by any means. I don't think anybody does, but if you do, please say so. This is time for discussion. But I, you know, Andrew, when, when you're saying that, what I want to make sure I'm understanding is, are you suggesting we postpone bringing a facilitator in, not use a facilitator, and, and just go work towards getting a diversity coordinator position in play at the city to do all of this for us or with us or I mean that's what I'm, maybe chicken egg cart horse yeah. kind of a thing is it do I'm not yeah. sure. I want to make sure I understand mm -hmm. where that yeah falls yeah good question um, I think that you know in my opinion I think um, working towards hiring a diversity coordinator might either be part of the structure or the plan development, or um, if we were to work on that simultaneously, perhaps, you know, this coordinator could, you know, um, be part of the process early on, if not starting this process. Um, I think it would only help in our, you know, in the development of our committee. Um, so I'm just kind of adding that uh, on there as something we want to consider and explore. Okay. No, absolutely. I just wanted to make sure I understood mm -hmm. it wasn't yeah. either or kind of a thing. It's mm -hmm. both and, and it's yeah. a matter of how we work that all in. Okay. okay. I had the same question you did, Ashley, about cart and horse, because it feels like the hiring of a position would be the result of our planning or our recommendation, you know, so I was trying to like piece it together how it would work too. So like. I just um, see some of the benefits of maybe having someone internally be the facilitator and then having that bridge between our committee and someone in the city on city staff um, I see a lot of benefits to um, the consistency versus an outside agent bringing in data or information for us and then you know that being outsourced um, versus in-house maybe oh absolutely I, I don't disagree I, I can see the strength and the value in that for sure and, and I think that's something we have to definitely figure out as we start putting together our plan to the city and recommendations to council and how to do that, maybe that's number one priority. I mean, you know, we certainly prioritize things and perhaps, you know, make a recommendation sooner than later on that front. So, uh, okay, so thank you for that. It's a good reminder, um, just kind of make a note. Um, was there other sort of thoughts or discussions that anyone had around what we're proposing to do in bringing on a facilitator, if Michelle's able to kind of draft the, the RFP, RFQ, we're comfortable whether just sending it out and the t 
it's timely fashion. Obviously, you notify us. I think when it's when you're doing so. Absolutely. Please, and that would be good. Yep. Um, I think. Yes, Aaron. My only suggestion would be as soon as we choose or have someone to fill that role that um, we start working on it immediately. Like I would even if it's like doing more than one meeting. Um, just because I believe oh, yeah. hearing that and wanting to talk about the diversity quarter, I think everything starts from that plan. You know, we'll set our goals in there, what we want to address. And so I think the sooner we can get that plan, I know the sooner the, the Absolutely. other people, staff will be. But also, I think it will really, you know, set our course for this committee. No, absolutely. I thank you for bringing it up in that perspective. I agree. And just so you know, uh, like Angie and I, we've we've already, like we had Michelle, we kind of talked. There's We'll be able to hand some, the individual a, a good structure, I think, a good format to already build. It's not going to be coming out of nowhere. So we have we have plenty of work kind of already, I think, groundwork started uh, to help that out. But I know it. you probably don't know for sure, but is it conceivable that we could review the applicants by the August meeting? A couple weeks to get out, a couple weeks to get it back. <laughs> uh, it'll be close because, again, we do try to give them a few weeks because we send it out. We give them time to come back with questions. Um, and then, you know, obviously to put their proposals together and to review them. So it, it will be close. Um, I Is it will try. possible to have a meeting early in September only for this? with a start time and end time so we come together and look at those so that when we do our I September meeting we actually have gotcha. something to discuss that's very very I mean I'm not adverse to having a secondary meeting right particularly if it's one issue from this time to this time and we right. get those proposals in advance and we do our homework right. I really like that idea yes. like you said just one agenda item such that if we wanted to someone asked about hearing from you know them presenting to us if we wanted people to present to us, then that could happen at the September meeting mm -hmm. to keep things rolling. Yes, yeah. no, I like I, that. I don't think August is probably feasible, just the way you have to give people time. But I absolutely think a deadline of the end of August and a week later we meet, and that still gives us another three weeks before our next meeting or whatever correct, that is. Correct. So we don't feel burdened having you know, two meetings in back to back. I think there's enough if we plan it correctly and of course we have to look yes. at people's schedule and we have to have a quorum I mean, although it, I mean is it a voting issue or we I don't even know that we're voting at the um, this you might meeting it's just an informational meeting and those who aren't there would still get it I think there's real value in being together to discuss it you may at that meeting choose who you would like to bring in for presentations. Mm -hmm. So you could consider that as a vote. voting. So then we'd have to have a quorum. So we have to look at, I mean, obviously we're looking at Labor Day. God, how's that Labor Day? Ah, that we're planning on. Mm -hmm. So so it would be, you know, we have to work around that. But I, I, think, I think it's feasible a, with this amount of notice. Well, it's a reasonable suggestion. I just, it's going to depend on the responses. You know, but let's say we get some in timely way that it fits. I think it sounds like we would we could work well, towards I mean, fitting in that meeting in when we're prior putting to that proposal out. Then there is that date. Oh, I, I understand. Correct. That. Yes. Yeah. And I should know that date well before our next meeting. Okay. So if you want to discuss having a special meeting in September, then we could potentially do that at the August meeting if that makes sense. Do you yes. currently have a deadline for the RF? I don't because we don't have it out yet. Okay. So, can we set a meeting with the option to cancel if we don't? I guess I worry that everybody's so busy with the beginning of school and Labor Day and everything that happens in September. I would hate to lose the momentum because people didn't get it on a calendar. So, we could always cancel a meeting, but it's harder to jumpstart one. In two weeks, that would we could potentially aim for the second Monday of September. I'm just throwing a date mm -hmm. out there. Obviously, the first Monday of September is Labor Day. That mm -hmm. would not be a good day, mm -hmm. but we could uh, potentially ahead of time look at that second Monday. We do have a city council meeting that night. Oh, I'm sorry. That might not work then. Are we? If it was, I mean, if it was earlier, if it was at five, we could 
I don't, I don't know how much time we would want for that meeting, but you could do a meeting before a city council meeting. So your city council is at what time? Six. I think that's real doable. It's a one issue meeting and we will have already gotten everything and we hopefully will have done our homework. I, I, I think that's reasonable personally. I don't know, Michelle, is that something you would mind or would you be able to I think we can make that work. I mean, obviously, uh, just have to double check a couple calendars. Right, right. Make at least sure. yeah, we can sort of tentatively and at this point. Kind I mean, of we do have end. Mondays as our meeting and it, there was a lengthy discussion of Mondays. Yes. But given that this is a special meeting, are we married to Monday? So, I mean, I don't see why we would take more than an hour if we've all gotten it in advance and we know that there's a deadline no, I, I agree and we can do our homework but i think for now that that's if you're all right with it we'll just have michelle look at this initial tentative date you know if nothing else and i apologize you said monday correct yes, yes. okay sorry our city council is on tuesday I was okay looking at curious about that i, I was wasn't like, okay, familiar with the tuesday. monday meeting but i was tuesday. like oh it's a hidden meeting i want to know that <laughs> <laughs> so we could do that monday whenever if we wanted to but that's tuesday sorry well, this well, that's the so tentative 5 p.m. on September 13th. Well, now that there isn't a council, do we want to do the 5:30 because people were in person saying yes. that 5:30 was more helpful mm -hmm. with getting off of work and blah blah blah. But before we get and somebody much. has to say something. Here right. we go. Here we go. I don't want to interrupt your meeting, but I Please just want do. to make you aware that the second Monday is Parks Board, so oh, there okay. might be some logistical issues that you'll have to right consider too. Here? Yeah. And what time do they meet? Probably I think they five. meet at six. Okay, so there we are, five o'clock. So <laughs> be there, be there. Well, thank you, John. No, that was good. There's some other things to consider. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we can take a look. I, um, we can check and see what might be available when we get back to you. Okay. Thank you. Well, good. I think I appreciate the discussion input that really kind of helps move this one on along and it would be great to get something in place. And I'm not going to think of the contingency plan of what if we get nobody. So I'm going to put it out there. We're going to get somebody. We're going to get all five. All right. Let's get more than that. So, OK. Um, all right. Uh, let's if you are open to let's move on to our next uh, item up for discussion, a rather important one we began last uh, meeting around our potential options and next steps uh, to prohibit conversion therapy in the city of Oshkosh. And I know Michelle, thank you and others for helping to kind of get this uh, initial analysis um, from the city attorney. I know that she had shared a memo. I'm not sure if anyone had a chance to read through it. I uh, really appreciated that additional information. I know personally it was very helpful it touched on a number of things that came to my mind. Um, I, you know, I don't want to necessarily, uh, you know, I'll just keep talking. So what I'd like to do is uh, just open it up for some of your thoughts and responses. Yeah, Aaron. I might be able to save a little time on this um, yeah. and just give you an update on, I had a, a meeting with Mark Roloff, city manager, Thank last you. week uh, to specifically talk about this issue and the other one. Um, and we had kind of come to the conclusion, um, you know, based on, you know, that memo that was shared with us and just other conversations that our first initial step would be to create some type of resolution instead of an ordinance. So resolution is not, you know, legally binding. There's no really um, clause in it, I should say, you know, teeth in it. Um, to you know hold people accountable if such an ordinance is broken it would just be a resolution um you know the city affirming that they don't support this um but trying to put in language that says you know if you see it like we would hope that you would treat this as it is and abuse um so we're in the steps um the goal is to create a, a resolution um and if you want it to come to this committee, I think that would be great to have it come here, look at the language, you know, give it either a thumbs up or thumbs down, and then send it to council um, for approval. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, if anything else wants to be done, that would be up to the committee. But I think right now the direction is to at least create some type of resolution affirming our support Excellent. or support against it. Oh, that's great. Thank you for the update. And I think that's uh that's that's great it does save a lot of discussion um, but 
there are a few things um, that I'd like to touch on as well. But do you, Angie or anyone else have a comment or Yeah, I or wanted question? to ask um, what, um, I guess, why not the ordinance? Um, just more specifics on. Um, yeah, I think it's the, in my opinion, I think it's the easier. I mean, I personally would like to see something done, but I think this is one of those issues that, you know, there's only so much we as a local government can do. Um, you know, me and Mark reviewed other cities um, in Wisconsin that have um, tried to do similar things or have passed their own measures, and Appleton is one one of the examples where they passed something, but there was it was really symbolic. You know, if, if they saw something, they would just report something or something would get sent to one of their departments, but nothing would really happen. Um, and, you know, there's not really so much of an enforceable mechanism that you can do right now at the local level. Um, so we thought that this would be at least the next best step to at least say something about it without having to deal with the legal challenges um, or the constitutional challenges that people would inevitably bring up. Um, so I'd like to see something, but I think it's going to come down to the state or federal level to do something about it. Well, and just you know, having gone through, and hopefully not doing it again, the mask mandate, we know that didn't have any mm -hmm. teeth because that was the Department of Health. But it just, it didn't do anything. No one got fined, no one got in jail, no one was made to, you know, it just, okay, that's that. And so I like the idea of the resolution. Would the resolution make it easier to eventually become an ordinance? Is it kind of, would it become a one, two-step process, or they're just not related? They're not related, but, you know, I think it gets the conversation out there, so at least we can talk about it without it just being thrown out for challenges, you know, because you can't challenge a resolution on its legal basis because it's just us making a statement, essentially. So I think it's a, a good first step to get it on people's minds, and it, you know, at least sets the tone for Oshkosh, saying that this is something that we're thinking about and we see it as, you know, a worthy topic. But it doesn't prevent us from doing something more um, if, you know, we find out more information or we learn that, oh, we can do more about this topic. So I think it's really just a starting step, at least. Well, I, I tend to concur uh, for pretty much everything you just said, Aaron. And I'm wondering if um, you have been, or if you're aware of tracking any of the current state uh, legislative bills that have been proposed. I mean, I know they went to committee. I mean, things can mm -hmm. often die there, but have you? Not off the top of my head. I know okay. they're in and out of stuff, so I, I haven't kept up the recent, but I'm aware of, you know, previous attempts to right. bring resolutions or changes at the state level. I think we're going to August recess here so that, that those, those folks might be back home soon. Um, okay, well, that's something I know I'll, I, I want to look further into because, you're right, that was a lot of my concern and question is really the legal enforceability of it and much less what other lawsuits might get sucked into the city. And so I think you got a good attorney and that's, that's all I'll say about it. But, um, yeah, I... Well, thank you for the update, and, um, and Michelle, thanks for getting this over to us. Absolutely. I, Obviously, thank uh, City Aaron. Attorney Lawrence for putting that together. Yeah, I appreciate that greatly. And, yeah, and Aaron, for bringing it, you know, and helping just keep keep this information current and bring it to the, to the council and keeping this and doing the work with, with, uh, with uh, Mr. Roloff there. That's, uh, that's the, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. And as I said, you know, once we have something drafted, I'm more than happy to have it actually come to the committee for approval, you know, because there might be something or, you know, specific language we want to change or just suggestions. Um, always happy to get that input. So once that's actually developed, I'll be sure to send, you know, have someone send it out just so committee can have it. Yeah, please do. Thank you. We'll make that a re Would one we, more request for that. as a committee, be voting and standing behind it? with the power of a vote or is it just FYI? It's up to the committee. I'm fine with either. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think, you know, from my perspective, I think, I don't know. It's, hey, it's just kind of like, this is our opportunity to provide that, that support. Like, you know, Hey, that's, that's, we're here. It's going forward. Like as a, as a DEI advisory committee, it seems appropriate that we would, you know, look at it, consider it. And then if we're in favor, you know, we could vote yeah. and, and support. I'd like to see something on record. Mm -hmm. And then it would be a, that would yeah. you know that would be on record then that we've publicly yeah, think, you know acknowledged it and like formally approved it. And to, yeah, to, to and in line with our mission. Agree. Which of course then we go back full circle to how do we educate the public about coming to speak and what issues are. So those all there's so many reasons to come up with do we push versus pull. I think as we um, work on that resolution, we can 
you know, have workshops as well to help um, make the information more widespread and you know um, accessible to our community so that if they would like to add comment or questions you know at those workshops those would be good opportunities to um, educate and you know make more aware of the issues um, I would agree that a resolution would be a, a good first step um, and you know I think the symbolism of passing a resolution um, it can be very powerful, um, and um, you know, I, I I would volunteer to help draft that resolution. Well, it's on that note. I'm not sure if I understand, but generally, you know, I think it's a function more of city admin to some extent as far as drafting resolutions and do you take input or like you know I know we've done that on one of our former ones I don't know if it was kind of a unique setup there you know uh. yeah I think the plan is um, I think Mark's plan at least is that staff would draft something you know with input from me if we want to change language um, right. but I think bringing the draft here um, for just further analysis would be beneficial okay so if anything I you know, we'd probably get a full draft be able to read the whole thing in front of us and then if we have suggestions on changes um, we could make those changes before it goes to the full council Do we have a, a timeline at this point my hope would be to have it by the next DEI committee um, it shouldn't take that long it's just a matter of getting the language that we want in there um, since there's no actual ordinance language it's just basically what we want in there so my hope is to have it on the next agenda here if the committee chooses to want to vote on it. Sure. Excellent. No, that's great. Thank you. Any further discussion or anybody have any other comments or thoughts? And, and, I, and I think as a committee, we can, we can always um, speak for it. Um, like we, we did our previous one. Uh, other ones that I did it with the county I think that as a committee we can do that and it's it shows strong support yeah well, thank you for that discussion and for the updates uh, you may be able to help update us on this next one uh, councilman as well you had brought up you know suggested you may have another update related to the next item which is potential options and next steps regarding initiatives to decriminalize marijuana in Oshkosh. Um, if you want to maybe lead with what you have to share. That would sure. Be um, so based off our conversation from last meeting at this committee, it, you know, the general consensus seemed that this was something that council should take on more so than the committee. Um, so I met with Mark, and actually I brought this discussion item up at a council meeting, um, and we just kind of had a discussion on whether we thought you know it was worth talking about or what specifically we actually wanted to do. Um, so we have it on as a outstanding issue to get updates because uh, city staff was gonna just gather more information um, on our options and you know just a history of what changes have already been made because um, the fine was reduced a few years ago. Um, so looking into the history of what changes have already been made. Um, but after meeting with Mark, I think the we're gonna start at least with um, a fine, lowering the fine. So that's kind of our, our focus, but um, doing that through city staff and council instead of, you know, putting this on this committee uh, to tackle. But certainly, you know, if, if they have input or, you know, any suggestions, happy to take it. But I don't think that, I think this is something that will just be through council. Appreciate that output or input or update. And does anybody have any any additional thoughts or things we want to add or share at this point? Well, I've I've never had marijuana, so I think I should try it first before. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I've mean, never had it. Don't want to try it. I'm joking. <laughs> How can I don't want to put on it? <laughs> at our last meeting, we had discussed holding workshops as well. Um, is that something that we would still be interested in? You know, I think part of our um, you know, as part of our committee, we can use our platform to, um, you know, bring awareness. I know the Oshkosh Herald did that, had a series of, um, had a series of articles that I found very, you know, resourceful, and I think um, the community also found it to be helpful, and just looking at um, this topic from 
you know, a couple different angles. And so, um, you know, as as a committee, do we want to use our platform to, you know, host workshops? Asking. Right. And I'd probably need to talk to our city attorney regarding, you know, what as a committee we can do when it comes to that. Um, so let me do a little research into that subject. I understand that, you know, we would not be part of the, you know, the actual ordinance, but, um, you know, we were discussing at our last meeting the intersection between race and um, the decriminalization. So I think it is something that, um, that interests our committee, at least in discussing um, how equity does play into um, this topic. So I would like to keep it on our minds, um, even if it's not, or even if it's like on a periphery level. Well, agreed, and, and go ahead, Aaron, please. I would just say, you know, if this is a topic that, you know, you care about, um, even though the exact ordinance wouldn't be voted on or worked on at this committee, even something as simple as, you know, a resolution or a statement of support, um, not even necessarily for the exact ordinance, just saying, you know, the committee feels that addressing, you know, racial inequities is important and we feel like this t this subject ties into it. You know, even something as simple as that, um, I think still has a big impact and uses the committee's voice because if it is an issue that you think the committee, you know, it's under their purview, um, you know, it might be worth saying something to council saying, you know, we know this topic's coming up and we think it's important to discuss for this reason, X, Y, and Z. But I'm just throwing out ideas at this point. Yeah, and even if it's not a resolution, just a collective um, statement from our committee, I think would lend, um, well, just, yeah, a collective statement from our committee would be impactful. Um, at, at this point, I don't see the need for workshop. I think we're all very aware on a local, state, national basis what those numbers are. And it's not just race. It's individuals who are disabled and they're trying to self-medicate. It's people who, there's just, there's a whole lot that falls into this committee's mission. But I don't know that a workshop is necessarily needed at this point. Now, after, you know, we put our rubber stamp on it and say, yeah, we really are into this. We really think this is important. You get that as part of the process of, of drafting the next step. Then when that is, then I think workshops might be good to have. So I think it might be a little bit premature right now. Yeah, and I think um, what I had in mind was more of like um, public education. That's what I wanted to understand, yeah, workshop um, term. Yeah. Right, yeah. but I don't know that public education is needed at this point. But I do think at some point it's very needed. I just think it's a little premature right now. But not our commitment to stand behind it. I think that is a pivotal part of what council should have, not just from this group either. I'm sure there's others that can lend their voice and that would strengthen it. To me, we, this needs to go back on the agenda because you said our commitment to stand behind it. We actually voted to pass it on to the council. So I think it's an assumption that we are gonna do that putting my own personal feelings aside, just as a committee, that was what we jointly decided. So um, to me, I think that it should go back on the agenda about if we're gonna do well, that. Well, I think that's what we're what it's saying. Gonna but we didn't, you use better words. Well. <laughs> no, you're exactly right. Yeah. But I, I don't know that the handoff is a final handoff is what I'm saying. So what? Yeah, so I think I agree. on a future agenda, whether it's next month or whether it's the following with whatever, I do think it needs to go back on the agenda as well. I would just like to propose then a suggestion that we, you know, for the very reason that you, you had noted, Beth, and that there is interest and there are intersecting points that I think as this moves along, I would like to, you know, kind of just make that request that we get sort of some ongoing updates, just make sure that we're, we're apprised of whatever maybe actions or motions are in play and whatever things, where it lands so that we can do what we are talking about, perhaps, you know. Um, there are certainly areas, and I look, you know, if I think, you know, put on a big thinking hat, like, there's many ways this could go, but so much of it's, you know, it's starting at the federal and state level, and, you know, it's it, there's a lot that's there, but it, it does, 
you, you know, the fine reduction, just uh, put it out there, I think is, is extremely important and make sure there's absolutely zero subjectivity in the ability of law enforcement to decide how that's applied. But those are my own two cents on that thing. Um, but yeah, so I, I thank you. I, I guess I would like to add that, just make sure it's an outstanding issue that we kind of just continue to get some updates on for the time being. Would and be I would also say that just because, you know, we don't know exactly what we're even voting on or what, you know, the language. So that's sure. important that you know that before you throw your support behind it. So right. So this I'll be sure to keep us. the committee updated on, you know, when that's available. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. And was there any other thoughts or discussions around this from other members? That this point okay well I really appreciate the again the, the updates and um, yeah there's so much to talk about around that but anyhow and all the other issues too um, Michelle do you have any updates or anything we can share around the Oshkosh monument I believe last we heard some of this language had been cycled back to the parks and Yes, absolutely. I'd be happy to just give a quick update. So as I believe we talked about the last time, both Landmarks and Parks was interested in staying um, engaged in this project. Um, the Landmarks did preliminary rev preliminarily um, have a meeting and reviewed it, and they'll be potentially discussing it again at their future meeting and parks is scheduled at their next meeting to have this discussion. They have not yet had the opportunity to um, look at the proposal from Dr. Manning. So that is scheduled in August for the parks. So I expect to have uh, further updates next month. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question then. So if I just heard you correctly, parks has not looked at this proposal from Dr. Manning and it sounds like Landmarks has had it. I mean, this is nothing new. It's been out there for a while, um, and now it's sitting out there. Now it might be at the next one. Um, I'm just, I don't find that to be satisfactory by any sense of the imagination. This, quite honestly, it seems like this has been going on since what I, we learned since 20. 2013 I mean there's been money donated has been sitting out there and I'll say I being we re, you know, just gonna tie it right back to our opening statement around land acknowledgement I want us to consider that statement and what we're doing there seriously because if we're not moving something like this forward I'm not gonna be quite frank I'm not gonna be putting out a land acknowledgement because it becomes meaningless unless there's action behind it um, so that's my own two cents uh, and where I stand in this but what can we do, I'm very curious, what can we do to press for a response? Because it's reading something, we've read it, we've looked at it, and come back with your response. Because I believe we've already voted in support of it. We pushed it out there, we've given our support, as drafted, as written, as approved by a Menominee Nation, their tribal government, their sovereign nation, their historians. I get where some of the language issues are, but. I would just like to get some of that formal response a little sooner than later. So if there's something we can do to facilitate that, I would be, I'm all ears. Like, right. do I need to go to those meetings too? Great restraint. <laughs> I'm just wondering, like, ah, because this is starting to smell a lot like, I'm gonna, I don't mean to be disrespectful to bureaucracies, there's a role there, but it's starting to smell a lot like bureaucracy playing this game of we're just gonna continue to just Dust this and shell it, you know, and I just don't, I just, maybe I'm misreading things, but is there some serious effort to delay or, or something here? Like, I just, not that you can answer that, but I just wondering, like, that's my thoughts. Sorry. Are the members of the Parks uh, Committee on your website? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So we could, we could yes, you can go there. to the Boards and Commissions page and you can see all of the members of all of our Boards and Commissions. Um, and yeah, so that, that is definitely out there. So in addition to any of us contacting um, parks members, um, I don't know what your thoughts are, Ashley, about maybe, I know we're popping up the August agenda, but um, Take them here maybe. Huh? some type of um, recommendation specifically to the parks committee. Um, yeah, I, th I thank you for what you're, I think I'm picking up what you're suggesting here. You know, like, yeah, I, we can do some of our own advocacy, sanction kind of, you know, maybe reach out I can touch base but if we don't hear something soon I, I think you know this is just this is 
I'm not. I'm, it's, it's uncomfortable. I don't, I don't particularly like that. I, I'm sorry, Aaron. Piggybacking on what you, th that very excellent statement. My question is: Are we as individuals empowered to email them and say, as a member of this committee, or are we doing it as citizen. as a citizen of Oshkosh? Because there is a distinct difference. So, when if we choose to email, how do we preface that? My thought was that as a citizen at this point, but then, like Ashley said, if it doesn't progress, potentially having a committee recommendation. I want to remind our committee that we wrote a resolution that um, sent over to council, and you know that might be a good first step is sending that resolution to the parks, and you know with and and part of the language was. Um, you know, we urge the Common Council and other responsible authorities to ex expeditiously approve and implement the project. So that is in our in our resolution. And the city, I think, was moving forward on it, but I, mm. I believe, Aaron, thank you. Two things. I think, you know, even just an email from the chair, you know, undersigned members of the committee, sending it to their committee and all members just saying, we think this should be a priority. I mean, I just pulled up the agenda from, for. Uh, Parks last meeting and it's not even on their agenda. Um, and I don't know when this is, but you know this has been, from my knowledge, like you said, been going on for the last couple of years. Um, this discussion, so you know, I don't know why it's not even on their agenda, or you know, this. Sh I think this issue should already be settled. Um, so I think just kind of pushing them along, even with an email or just bringing it up. And I'm happy to mention something at our council meeting tomorrow. Um, and I know I've talked with. Uh, the mayor who's on the parks board and she's been really trying to push this issue as well um, it might just be a matter of reminding them that this is an important issue and as my understanding it is on the next agenda okay. on August 9th I believe and um, also myself or John or both of us do plan to attend that to assist them with any questions they have about this project well I appreciate that thank you and and I'm I'm a relatively patient person by all means uh, but I like to play nice and I want to work with folks and I can't say I have a relationship with them and I don't want to come off as being too pushy and any of that and I get everybody has their vested interests and there's concerns but from the strategic positioning of the city you know I, these are things that I've got a list of stuff that I want to be putting in our recommendations but this is something that it's I will just be honest like I work across the country with tribal nations that's my job the opportunity for cities to partner and work and develop economic opportunities and maximize relationships is immense. And these types of symbolic things carry great weight. And that's all I will say. There's opportunity here. And I would like to see that opportunity continue to flourish in the right direction, uh, personally and professionally and otherwise. Um, so, okay, thank you for the update. Um, and, um, Definitely kind of wait to sort of see where parks lands. I like the suggestion of maybe just at least reaching out. I'll take some of that under advisement. Um, let me ask other members here. Uh, you know, I would certainly be happy at least make an introduction, just make sort of a formal sort of an outreach to these folks. Um, not that they can't do the other and vice versa, but uh, would you be comfortable just in general if I were to draft something on our behalf? Would you want to read it first or just sort of a, basically I'm thinking just, hey, here's who we are, so we're like, strongly you know, encourage you to move that along or just make sure, you, I don't know, I'll, I'll come up with something, but. What do you think well, about primarily referencing the um, resolution? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you know, so that you don't have to write up a bunch of stuff. We, you know, we already agreed on the importance of it and, Just and a nice reminder. Expedi you know, expeditiously following up and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think it would be helpful if you incorporated that in mm -hmm. whatever you're sending. Okay, that's good. I mean, I'm okay to doing anything, but I think, you know, it might just be good. I mean, we are a new advisory committee. Uh, I would just like to sort of leapfrog some of the time it might take to build a relationship and the minds of others and legitimacy and our other committees and just be more a part of the function of the city a little sooner than later is really my intent. So I like that. And thank you, Angie and, 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 and Beth for reminding me. And um, I'll kind of, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out and find a good way of messaging. Based on tonight, I, I think you're going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Those comments tonight. Okay. Um, I mean, that really brings us to the end of our formal agenda. I didn't even ask at the beginning if there's anything anybody wanted to add, if there's any add-ons to the agenda. Uh, I didn't even think of that. But is there, 
I know this is an appropriate time to do so, but is there um, anything outstanding or anything that came to someone's mind that we, we forgot or didn't think about prior to or before it got started? I would like to ask the um, process one goes through to get something on the agenda. I did send an email out to the whole committee about my presence at the oh. council meeting for the day by day warming shelter. I did ask that it be on this agenda and that we have a representative from the day by day warming shelter come and give us an update. And <laughs> Carmen, I would say you did everything you needed to. That was just all on me. I think in this okay, picture transition, I totally didn't even. I just wanted to confirm that I went through that, that process so that when I wanted, and it's not a big deal because. Oh, it is a big deal. Well, it's not the end of the I, world, let's put it no. that way. But I do think that that is such an important issue that our committee should be involved in that whole process. And when I went, last, you know, the last three weeks ago and I just spoke as a citizen, I didn't have that comfort level to say, I sit on this committee and this is something we've discussed. And, and so. I mean, it, it had strength because it's right out my back door. I literally walk out the door and I look to the left and there it is. So I did come as somebody who has a real reason to be there just as a, as a community member. But as long as I know that is a process, is there a timeline that we need to get a request in so that it makes an agenda? Is it... Um, I would Go ahead, Michelle. Yeah. Well, generally it's a week, but Ashley and I are going to try to meet even earlier than that. Mm -hmm. So certainly the sooner you can get any agenda okay. items, the better. Um, but certainly um, about a week ahead is when we're trying to finalize those agendas. Okay. Yeah, at, at the latest. And yes. and I would suggest, and I would love, I think, I don't know if others, please share, if, if you have contact and if there would be a means to get someone to come from day by day to really kind of, I mean, I'm following it in the news. You know, it is. You know, it's only as good as what you read. I'm, I haven't attended the meetings. You yeah. know, but well, I I did talk to Molly, and they she's very eager to come. I, yeah. I mean, the vote is tomorrow, so we're going to see how that goes. Either way, I think it's appropriate for her or somebody from the board to come and address what are you know what are the issues of homelessness, which we all know, but what will this facility bring to the table that the old one doesn't yes even a, just as a suggestion having a discussion topic and inviting yeah. her as well but just on homelessness in general because obviously yeah. this isn't the end all be all oh, this, no, it's just but small. maybe it's some an issue that committee can tackle if they have other issues um, yeah. maybe future things to come to council and I know that there are other organizations that are trying to do little villages or trying to expand I mean it's it's just a massive problem throughout the nation and it's one that isn't going to ever go away and it just isn't and there's a whole lot of reasons for that but I think that when we get down to the core conversation about inequities if this yeah. isn't part of what we do then why do we even meet so okay well I will be going to the meeting tomorrow thank you and, um, and Carmen I guess I'd like to request if you have it sounds like you talk with Molly and you have some other contacts of the board. Um, would you be able to help facilitate or make a request oh, to absolutely. ask them mm -hmm. to come in? And I think, you know, from what I can tell, there, we should have room on the, the coming August agenda. I mean, we'll have a few things to run down, but that I think would be very timely, personally. And yeah. I think and, it, and it and is one of that, those. That that is a topic that is a workshop topic. It, it's, uh, down the road yes um, I know they the timeline on this is they are hoping they they have enough to, to break ground they've already got their plan they've already got security in place they have the I mean that's all done and they, they've already at the planning meeting they got a uh, approval for rezoning so that was huge because it's a residential neighborhood. So that's rezoned. And they're looking at breaking ground this fall with an open date of April-ish. And what it does is currently the facility only has uh, beds for 25 people. They do have programs that happen in terms of uh, literacy and uh, financial planning, uh, drug and alcohol abuse, and there's a whole slate. So it isn't just, here's a bed, so you're not gonna get rained on. 
Um, it's going to be a 365 day shelter versus a half a year because the summer is just as dangerous in its own way as the winter. It's gonna be 50 beds versus 25, so we're still lacking greatly. There will always be homeless who don't want a home. They don't want to be involved. Um, having that shelter gives these people an address. If you have an address, then you get benefits. and you. So it's much more than just a bed. So it's a very, I thought, aggressive timeline to try and get it open. Uh, the board member who is involved, heavily involved, was involved in... Um, Oshkosh Corp's new headquarter, and so I kind of think they know what they're doing. So they, it's, it's a, a very strong plan. Um, it's a locked unit, so it opens at 6, and once you go in, you don't get out till 8. Um, there are homeless people who have jobs. Um, it, this site was selected because it's close to uh, programs that people need already. It's close to transportation in terms of being right down the street from the bus. I mean, there are a lot of really, really good reasons why this was chosen. They came to our neighborhood core group, which I'm a member of, and there were probably about 20 of us in that room. So it was quite a lively discussion. I'll admit, I have that same idea of ugh, my property values, but there are neighbors already. They're here, they're just, in the park in other places they're in the library and so after that meeting every single person on our core group was excited about it they but there most people didn't walk in excited so i think that they did a very good presentation they answered questions i was very disappointed that molly did not come to that last meeting for the planning she was had already scheduled out of town trip and I I don't think that they handled it well I don't think they designated a, um, a representative from the board who could really answer questions in a concise way there wasn't a handout there wasn't you know a bullet point so I think they kind of well not kind of I think they dropped feedback them all. for them huh uh, but I did give them that <laughs> feedback good, I did good. write all to right. all the city council members uh, just as a resident I got a lot of Really, I mean, I got great responses from the city council that responded to me saying, wow, thank you so much. I did share my story of how close twice I came to homelessness, that I live here in Oshkosh because of a car wreck, and I, I had to make a very specific, do I go on disability and ultimately probably be homeless since it's a very expensive city, or do I relocate where I have family? So twice in my life I have been closer than you know to homelessness, and I have filed bankruptcy, and I have been that person. Um, I think the committee very much appreciated my comments. Um, I don't think it swayed them. I think people walked in with an opinion as to whether it was gonna be rezoned, but it is not a rubber stamp issue. It is not, oh, we're just gonna go through the process. And I think we owe it to our neighbors throughout the entire Oshkosh to let people know what's going on. Because it is not just River East. Yeah, we're most directly affected right now, but you know, it's it's our whole community and, and it's our whole um, thought process on what homelessness looks like and how we can do our best as a city to address it. Because I think that goes a long way, as you say, to opportunities to making us a very desirable city to live if you look at our homeless numbers compared to another city that is similar in size and I have to make a decision where I'm gonna move. I wanna move where there's a low homeless number but how do you get there so um i'll i'll go tomorrow and hopefully it's gonna be approved and um i did see one neighbor that i've talked to on my dog walk who was very upset and his house is in the market and i go i almost said good i hope you pack but because <laughs> <laughs> you didn't so, yeah no carmen i gotta thank you for that you are a great spokesperson them. Um, but Aaron, briefly, um, to your point, this is one of those larger issues. Um, and so what comes to my mind is as you're talking and is there are a number of big issues, that might be something we need to figure out as well. Like how do we determine of all the things, is there a really big issue we want to, to bring in s series of guests because this touches on many areas so that we could figure out what do we need to do to conduct a workshop in a, you know, in a, in a, in a format that would make sense. So 
I, there was just two thoughts I wanted to share, but thank you. Yeah, I would you. just just a reminder that you know addressing homelessness was one of the strategic goals that council yes. gave. Um, so it's very much on council's mind. Um, you know, it's one of the categories that was specifically stated for spending ARPA dollars. Um, so I hope that when we have the discussion of creating the plan, um, that homelessness is you know one of those top priorities on there. Um, and you know maybe we have ideas that committee will make ARPA requests of the council. So just things to think about, but I think this would be a great topic to have on, or goal, um, goals in mind when developing that plan. Yeah, and, and thank you for bringing up the ARPA money, because as far as I understand, I mean, that was uh, a 2024 deadline to ex like uh, expense all of those, or do you have to, like at what point does it have to be obligated, you know, uh, as far as the city, you know, especially ARPA money. And I don't know what other dollars they had captured through CARES or anything else, but. I'm not sure on the exact date and when that needs to be spent by. Do you know that? Or at least obligated somehow on paper. Like, is there a formal deadline, you know, especially as it ties to our recommendations to the city, if there's even things to be considered in that regard? You know, I know budgets are always an issue. You know, if there's money available, does the city have a timeline to say, all right, we have to submit our plan and, you know, how we're going to obligate all its funds, you know, and then we have, you know, X number of years to expense them and carry out these projects. I would. I could go home and do my own homework, but I'm just curious as to uh, if, if, we, if we could find that out. I mean, not that anyone needs to know now, but is that something we can find out? It would be helpful, I believe, for us as far as our timeliness to making certain recommendations or advisements. If and I would just say I, I know this is going to be an ongoing process. Sure. It's, you know, the goal is obviously not to spend all the money within the first year. Um, no, so it has to be smart, and that's, yeah. you know, that's why I, I'm asking because, mm -hmm. you, you know, I, again, just – it's, it's what I get to do for work is, is help governments determine how to strategically utilize these dollars to meet some significant needs. So that's where I'm at. Like, yes, I just want to understand some of those yep. parameters for our committee. Thank you. Um, okay, I didn't want to, like, keep us here any longer than we needed to. I know we really wrapped through our agenda. Um, I guess there a motion to adjourn if there are no other topics or anything to discuss. You get a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Opposed? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you all. I appreciate Thank your time. You. Thank you for. And I will know. I have an